Hi, I'm DeAndrea coming to you from the Children's Museum Houston and welcome to another read and play by Conoco Phillips. Today we will be reading the book Counting on Catherine and stay tuned later for an activity that goes along with the book where we're going to build our own rocket ships to send to the moon. Well, just like Katherine Johnson did. I would like to thank HarperCollins for allowing us to read this book today. Counting on Katherine, How Katherine Johnson Put Astronauts on the Moon. Book by Helene Becker and illustrations by Dal Fulmerick. Counting on Katherine. Counting on Katherine. Catherine loved to count. She counted the steps on the road, the steps up to the church, the number of dishes and spoons she washed in the bright white sink. The only thing she didn't count were the stars in the sky. Only a fool, she thought, would try that. Even so, the stars sparked her imagination. What was out there? Catherine yearned to know as much as she could about numbers, about the universe, about everything. Catherine's boundless curiosity turned her into a star student. She was so bright, she skipped three whole school years. She catapulted right past her brother. He wasn't too happy about that. By the time she turned 10, Catherine was ready for high school. But back then, America was legally segregated by race. Her town's high school didn't admit black students of any age. Catherine burned with fury. She wanted more than anything to keep learning. There was still so much to know. Count on me, Catherine's father told her. By working night and day, he earned enough money to move the family to a town with a black high school. Catherine loved high school. She was good at every subject, but math was still her favorite. She dreamed of becoming a research mathematician, making discoveries about the number patterns that are the foundations of our universe. In those days, though, there were no jobs as research mathematicians for women. Professions most available to them were teaching and nursing. So Catherine became a primary school teacher. She liked her job and she loved her students, but she never stopped dreaming about exploring numbers. In the 1950s, the U.S. government's National Advisory Committee on Aeronautics NACA hired thousands of new employees. It even started hiring black women as mathematicians. Catherine heard about the mathematician jobs. Her heart raced with excitement. Perhaps her dream could come true after all. But when she applied for one of the positions, she was told they were already filled. Catherine had to wait a whole year until new spots opened up. Her patient paid off. She got the job. A few years later, the Soviet Union sent a rocket ship into space, launching a space race with the United States. NACA was rolled into a new space agency, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. Catherine now found herself at the heart of America's space program. She worked as a computer. Electronic computers were not widely used yet, calculating long series of numbers. All the computers were women. They were given the tasks that men thought were boring and unimportant. That didn't bother Catherine. She knew that without contributions, a spaceship couldn't reach its destination nor safely return to Earth. Here's why. Sending a rocket ship into space is like throwing a ball into the air. At first, the force of the throw sends the ball up 
up. But as its energy runs out, the ball's path curves back towards the ground. Where it lands depends on what angle it was thrown and how high and how fast it flew. Because math is a kind of language, Catherine could ask those questions. How high would a rocket ship go and how fast would it travel? Using numbers, and numbers would provide the all-important answer. Where would it land? To find out, Catherine plotted the numbers she calculated on a graph. When she joined the points together, she formed a curved line. At one end of the line was Earth at the time the rocket ship launched. At the other was where Earth would be when the ship landed. Catherine's reputation for accuracy and strong leadership skills, she was known for asking plenty of questions, got her promoted to Project Mercury, a new program designed to send the first American astronauts into space. Mercury's mission were going to be dangerous. So dangerous that even the project's star astronaut, John Glenn, refused to fly unless Catherine okayed the numbers. You can count on me, she said. Glenn's spacecraft, Friendship 7, orbited Earth three times and returned home safely. Glenn became a national hero. Catherine was promoted again. Now she was asked to calculate the flight paths for Project Apollo, the first flights to the moon. Count on me, she said. On July 20th, 1969, the Apollo 11 astronauts walked on the moon. Their feat was celebrated around the world. More triumphs followed. Apollo 12 rocketed to the moon in November 1969. Apollo 13 launched on April 11, 1970. But on the third day of Apollo 13's flight, the worst thing happened, an explosion in space. Could the crippled spaceship make it to the moon? And if it didn't, would it be able to get back home to Earth? The three astronauts on board were in gray peril. Commander Jim Lovell told Mission Control, Houston, we have a problem. Back on Earth, Katherine Johnson got a phone call. Her flat path calculations would have to be done all over again and perfectly. It would be the toughest challenge of her life. Catherine told Mission Control, you can count on me. She rolled up her sleeves, took a deep breath, and began doing the maths. She worked hard and fast. A few hours later, Catherine's calculations were finished. The flight path to return home would take the ship around the far side of the moon. From there, the moon's gravity would act like a slingshot to zing the ship back to Earth. To get home, the crew of Apollo 13 would have to follow Catherine's course exactly by burning off fuel at precise intervals. If the astronauts made a mistake, the ship would drift through space forever. Catherine waited anxiously to hear the astronauts report. Finally, it cracked all over the loudspeakers. We got it! Apollo 13 was back on track. Katherine Johnson had done it. She brought Apollo 13 home. She was no longer the kid who dreamed of what lay beyond the stars. She was now a star herself. The end. We just finished reading the book, Counting on Katherine, where Katherine helped get a rocket to and from space. Now we're gonna build our own rocket ship use an area to make sure that we don't go over 65 square inches. So we need some materials. We need an 11 by 17 sheet of construction paper. We also need inch graph paper. You need markers, glue, scissors, and just regular 8 by 11 construction paper. So first we're going to trace our square, our base of our rocket ship. 
And remember, our rocket ship cannot be more than 65 square inches. And we're trying to figure out the area, this part inside of here, what the area is. So we need to see how long it is. We need to take one length times one width. How long, how wide, just one. So let's see how long it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight inches long. And let's see how wide. One, two, three, four four inches wide and in order to find the area we have to multiply these two together which is eight times four is 32 so it's 32 square inches and if i wanted to check myself i could just count the squares all the squares and you should have 32 squares so remember area is one length times one width equals the area. So now I am going to cut these out, cut this out and make my other parts of the spaceship, which I already have them cut out here. So I've made my base. I made my body. That's where the crew is going to be. And then here's the nose and my spaceship legs. So now we're going to see if this equals up to less than 65 square inches. Now I'm going to take these pieces and I'm going to cut out construction paper because I want to make make my rocket ship pretty. So I'm going to cut these out and I have my shapes here. And you're gonna lay those on your construction paper and glue them down onto your construction paper. Here's my finished product. So my base was 32 square inches. The part where the crew is going to be is six square inches and the tip of my rocket ship is two square inches. My legs are four square inches a piece. If I add all of those up together, I have 32 plus six, that's 38. 32 plus six plus two more, that's 40, plus four, that's 44 and then plus four more that's 48 48 square inches so it's less than 65 square inches so we will be able to blast off into space to make it more challenging for older kids you can use centimeter grid paper and they have to make a rocket ship that is less than 250 square centimeters in area Thank you for joining us for another ConocoPhillips Read and Play. Remember, today we read the book, Counting on Catherine, and we did the activity Blast Off. If you like the book and the activity, please like us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Again, I'm DeAndrea coming to you from the Children's Museum, Houston. Bye.